Okay, good morning, happy Saturday. As I said uh, in the previous video, today we want to work out, uh, we want to continue to work on conservative vector fields. So we want to see, first of all, uh, we got a problem here. It's asking us to calculate the divergence of the vector field. So, uh, yes, we, we got this vector field F uh, with component Y uh, e to the xy uh, plus 1 and then x e to the xy um, you know, here. So, you know, this is, the, this is one convention. Some other textbook might actually write the vector field as something like this. So this, would, this one would be e to the x y plus 1 in the direction of the x-axis vector, which is i, plus uh, uh, no, the bracket is up to avoid confusions, plus x e to the x y in the j direction, and if we want 0 in the k direction. It's just one of the many conventions you can write a vector field, and so, you know, they say that this is this y, j, k are the Normal component versors of the vector field. Um, this is a this is a, this is a two dimension, so we don't have this z here. So um, this is basically is a linear application that for a couple in R two output another couple in R two. So we're working the real numbers. So remind the, remind me how we calculate the divergence of the field. We've got this formula to calculate the diversion of the vector field F, which is del cross F. So it's the scalar product between the del operator and the vector field itself. Remind that del is written as uh, d dx i plus d dy j. We're going to ignore the um, y, the, the z component, because this is, we're working in R2, so there is no third dimension. And the scalar, the basically we do the scalar product between this component and this component. So as a reminder, as a reminder, I'll put here, for those of you who don't remember, uh, let a, if a and b are vectors, the dot product or scalar product is even is given by the sum i from zero to n of a i times b i. So basically, is the the sum of is this times this and this and this. So obviously, when you apply del dot y, you get that the div f is d dx of y e to the power of x y plus one plus d dy x e to the x y. So we're going to work out this differentiation. So let's have a look at this. The partial derivative with respect to x of y e to the x y plus 1. y is a constant, so y will remain, will be retained. The, this is a, a, we apply the chain rule to do the derivative of e to the x y with respect to x. So that's basically y e to the x y. So this ends up being y squared e to the x y, and plus 1 is 0, plus the derivative of the respect to y, that's very similar, x will be treated as a constant, and you can see that in this case x will go in front of the, of the exponential, so you have x squared e to the power of x y. So we can factor out e to the x, x squared plus y squared. So this is the first, the first answer to the problem. So, um, and they ask us to calculate the divergence in the origins and at point minus one three. So in the origins, we just basically going to plug zero. So that's zero, because is equal to e to the e to the power of zero, which is one, and then this is zero. Then in one three, uh, 
that's equal to um, e to the power of minus 3 times minus 1 to the power of 2 is plus 1, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, so this becomes 10, and e is 10 e to the minus 3. Or if we want, 10 over e to the power of 3. It's completely arbitrary how you choose it. So, now the second bits of the problem, so this was i. Now, i, i, we want to prove that this field is conservative. Like the first thing we need to check is whether there is circulation in this field. So if there is circulation, then, the code, then there is changes in the vector field, and therefore the vector field is not conservative. So we need to calculate the, the, the curve of the vector field, or the rotor in some, um, some other culture. So the curl of F, remind me, is the cross product between the value operator and F. So this we're going to do a little bit of matrix calculation. So the cross product will be equal to the determinant of this matrix. We put I, J, and K. We put D, D, X, D, D, Y, D, D, Z. And then we put y e to the x y plus 1 and x e to the x y and then zero. Now if you don't remember the Laplace rule um, you can go back and uh, have a look at it to calculate the determinants for a 3 times 3 matrix um, basically what you do the f you, you calculate you cross the first first row first column then you get this, which becomes zero. This and this will also become zero. This and this will not become zero. So basically, it's like seeing that I cross these two and I calculate the determinant, or I do k times the determinant of this two times two matrix ddx ddy y e to the x y plus one x e to the x y. So, this becomes equal to what? It becomes equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of x e to the power of xy minus partial derivative with respect to y of y e to the xy plus 1. And let's not forget this goes in the direction of k. That's also because when you have two vectors uh, the cross product is a, is, a, is a vector that is perpendicular to both at the same time. So when you don't have any, any d component, then obviously it is quite straightforward that the, the only vectors will, be, will have only a component in the, in the, z, in, in the z, z axis. You can think of this, if you do the cross product of x and y, you get z in the Cartesian axis. So now when we differentiate this, this is a product now. So this guy here is a product. So what I do, I um, with respect to x, will be first the derivative of the first bit, which is uh, 1. So 1 times e to the x, y, which remain the same, plus the derivative of the second, which e to the x, y times y, so becomes x, y, e to the x, y. Remember, x remain the same negative take away the derivative of this guy here which by some strange methods you will see that is um, e to the x y times one mine uh, plus x y e to the x y if you don't understand just go back and review the chain rule remember that when you differentiate with respect to x y is treated as a constant and vice versa when you respect the y uh, when you differentiate with respect to y x is treated as a constant so the result here is uh, and let us not forget that we're still doing the cross product so uh, my my teacher at university was extremely strict i remember losing two marks for forgetting to put the k here as you can see that hasn't worked i'm still forgetting it so 
uh, this is obviously is, is evident that we got e to the xy plus xy e to the xy minus e to the xy plus xy, no, uh, minus e to the xy in the direction of k, which is zero. Because this minus this is zero, this minus this is zero, so it's zero. So what do we deduct that, indeed, our f is a conservative vector field. Yay! Right. Now we wanna we know that the the vector field is conservative and therefore we need to calculate the potential. We remind ourselves that if f is a, is a conservative field, then there is a function u. In this case, it would be a function of x and y, such that the gradient of u is equal to f. So now, how do we work this out? Uh, we say, we calculate the gradient of u. Remember, the gradient of, of, a, of a function is a vector that has as component the partial derivative. So the, the, the gradient of u will be written as du dx i plus du dy j. So now we have two system of equations. So we've got um, du dx equal to uh, the first component of the f vector, so that was y e to the x y plus 1, and then this is equation 1, then we've got du dy, which is equal to x e to the x y, and this we call equation 2. Now, to work out what u, to the, u of x y is, what we need to do is we need to um, integrate one of these two. As, as the equation number two seems easier, I'll start with equation number two. However, this is completely arbitrary. So if you start with equation one, number one, you will get the same result. So if I then say that u to the x, y is equal at the integral of x, e, to the x, y with respect to y. So when I integrate this, x is a constant, so it can go out of the integral. Now, the integral of e to the x, y is 1 over x, e to the x, y. And then we need to add a constant. In this case, the constant would be a number, but would be a function. Would be a function of x alone. and this comes as out, so it's basically, we know that the first part of u to the u of x, y probably a little bit better is simple e to the x, y plus the function of x. Now, next step will be to find what f of x is. So how do I do that? I go and use equation 1. First, I differentiate with respect to x this guy that I just found. So with respect to f, du dx becomes um, e to the power of x so times y, so it becomes e y e to the power of x y plus f prime of x. Remember, this is a function of x which only, which will produce a function of x only. Now I plug this guy into equation 1 and I find out that y e to the x y plus f prime of x is equal to y e to the x y plus 1. So what do we find out with that? That this and this cancels out. So as a result f prime of x is equal to 1. This means that f of x is the integral of 1 in the x, which is in x plus a constant c. So now we have found f of x, so we've got the potential 
the potential is therefore u of x y equal to e to the power of x y plus x plus e. They also ask us to work out what u of zero zero is. Well, u of zero zero uh, gives us e to the power of zero, which is one plus zero, so it, is, it equals one plus c. So the particular potential for u zero zero equal to zero will be c plus one equal to zero, or c equal minus one. Therefore, we have this potential to be e to the power of x y plus x minus one. Now, um, we say that we could potentially verify, the problem doesn't ask us to do it, but we could verify if we actually indeed, when you do the gradient, when you do the gradient of u of, of x, y, you end up with f of x. Let's have a look. Let's calculate the gradient of u. So d dx of um, this guy here, plus uh, in the direction of i, plus d dy, this guy here, in g. So, the partial derivative of this with respect to x4 will be it would be that d del u grad u or <coughs> you you can write like this don't, don't write like this this is this is not right this is wrong it should be written del u or grad u so you've got the partial derivative with respect to x so that's uh, e to the x y so that's y e to the x y plus one i plus d dy so that's x e to the x y that is this out of zero j which is d to the thanks very much for watching and i look forward to your feedback